This is our second video on Kahoot's. In our previous video, we looked at how we can create our own Kahoot. So it's like a little quiz that you can run in your class in real time. So this is how we've created the Kahoot already. So now how do I run a Kahoot? How do I actually run the Kahoot in class so that the students can engage in the content? So there are lots of ways of running a Kahoot. First of all, you can create, you run a Kahoot that you haven't created, that you found online. So you can discover a Kahoot. So maybe you want a particular Kahoot on the flags of the world. I think we did discuss this in the previous video, but you can search for a particular Kahoot. So if you like a particular Kahoot, you can actually play it. You can add it to your favorite or add it to your collection so that you can always find it again later on. Um, so that's one option. Or we're going to go back to home and we will find all our Kahoots over here. So I'm going to go to this Kahoot that I created on carrots. So here we go. So they both work in the same way. When you've got a Kahoot, you'll see something like this when you open it and you are obviously allowed to edit it or you can play it. So we're going to play the Kahoot. And this is what you would do in a class situation. You'd obviously have this up on a projector or maybe you are screen sharing this through a class online, but you would need to do this live. So we're going to ways to play it. We can uh, assign for self-paced learning for later. That's if you want it to be done at a later stage. We're going to run this in the actual classroom as it is, but there is another option where you can have them do it at their own pace or at a later stage. And so we're going to use it in the actual classroom. So it's busy running the Kahoot now. So what's going to happen is this will appear on your screen and we know you can ask them if they want to be in teams. Maybe you've got a very large class or you've got limited devices. Then you can obviously have them in teams and they can share a device. If every student has their own device, then we can go to the classic option. And there are other options here for the games that you can specify over here um, if you want those. But we're just going to go straight to the classic option and run it from there. So there we go. The game is loading. And then this will appear on your screen. And there's obviously some music running in the background, which you can obviously change the music if you want to change the type of music or you want to just, hey, I want to switch it off, please. Um, but you can have the music off in that. And so we've got the website that the students must go to. If they've got a phone, they can actually download the Kahoot app and use that as well. And there'll be some sort of game pin that'll be displayed on your screen. So now what the students will go to this website, they can just literally type in Kahoot.it on their phones, on a browser or on a computer screen, or they can go to the app. Now, what does it look like when they go into that option? Well, yeah, I've got another browser open with, this is what it looks like on Kahoot.it. So there's the game pin. So we're going to type in that game pin. Well, the students will do this. They will type this in on their particular game pins and they will enter and it'll ask them if they want to give a nickname and stuff like that. So they can say this is student one or whatever name they are using, student one. And they say, let's go. Once they've logged in, you'll see that student one has been added to your screen. So there you can see student one's been added and they are in and the game is ready to play for them. But obviously you need more students to play in a quiz. Otherwise it's just a a one-on-one -on -one quiz. So I'm going to go and add some more students quickly. And so to, to, to demonstrate this to you on my screen, I've actually just opened up three different browsers and each one's logged in. Obviously each student would do this on their machine, but just so that we can see what it looks like. So I've got three students that have logged in to the game. And so there you can see their names. If you don't like a name, you can actually click on a name. I'll just take this away. You can actually click on a name and remove it. If you if they've given a bad name or something that's offensive, you can click on it and it'll, dis it'll remove them from the game. Okay, so once you've got all your students in and you're ready to play, so I'm going to do this in real time, so it's going to be quite challenging. So I'm going to have the student over here, and this is what the screen looks like for the, for the students on the projector. So the, you're going to run your quiz. So I'm going to click Start. And it's going to say carrots. So this is the topic. So I'm going to have my little, this is what the students are seeing on the side. So the quiz is running and this will appear on the screen. So there's a quiz. What do carrots help with? So they give a question and then they're the different options. So as a student, I will see these little symbols. So I can see, ah, oh, it's definitely our site. So I will click on that one where another student might go, Hey, this is a different student. They go, I think uh, it helps with flying. So I'm going to click flying. And then the other student, if there's time, he might say it also for sight. So there we go. They're all entered. So at the moment, it tells the student, Hey, there's your, there's, you got it right. You got it wrong. Um, it tells you, you get points allocated on how fast you entered the question. And if I go to the screen where the questions are being shown, there you can see how many got it right, how many got it wrong, and so on. So this is also very good for remedial. The game doesn't continue until you click the next question. You can now take this time to 
give any feedback. Maybe you find all the students got a particular question wrong. Maybe, so then you can say, okay, obviously the students don't understand this concept. I need to reiterate it or re-explain it and stuff like that. And then you can move on to the next question and so on. So there we go. So there it tells who's in the lead. It's a nice little game. The kids love it and they can see how they're moving up and down the, the scoreboard. And then you can move to the next question, which would go like this. What type, what carries what type of vegetable? And now the students are going to go, hey, okay, so this is a root vegetable. And this student is saying, no, it's a leaf vegetable. And then the other student, what is he saying? They're saying it is the red one. I don't know what the red one is. And there you can see two got it wrong, one got it right, and so on. So there you can see all the distribution. So I'm going to complete the quiz and show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, so we're now at our last question. So let's go to the next. So there's one more question to go. And so once I've done that, I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So there's one more question. So let's see how they're doing this question. So there are the results of the last question. Two got it right, one got it wrong, and one got the blue option, one got that option. So only two got it correct. So if we move to the next bit, this is now the quiz is finished. Um, so now what it does is it does a little score, like it's a little podium to see who's on top. So there you go, it says carrots, and then it'll have a little animation. You have to say who. Okay, so this person won. This is second. This is third. Obviously, everyone's in the top three because there were only three students. And then they tell you, oh, student one. So it's a nice little way for them to be motivated to engage in the content. They can see their little points. You can see the first person got five out of five and so on. So there we go. A nice little way to demonstrate. And then when you click on next, you know, if this, oh, by the way, the students will see this and they'll see uh, where they placed and stuff like that. So they do get that feedback as well on their screen. So there you can see who first place was. And then we just go next and then we can start the quiz again or go back to the podium. Another option is you can get feedback for it. Okay. And also when you go back to your quiz now, you'll notice here that you can see that it's been played once and how many players were played and stuff like that. So you've got all these lovely little options here. And there's a little thing over here. You can, if you click on these three dots, it says you can duplicate. There's a thing about reports. You can also access your reports over here. You see there's a little shiny thing saying, hey, we've got some new reports there. And every time you play the game, it generates a report for you. So this is the report that was created now from the game that we just played. We can obviously rename it and open it because obviously you might play this multiple times. And if I click on the report, let's go see what it, information it provides us. It gives me a nice summary of the report, of the questions and so on. It can tell me who the players were and what they, what their rank is, what, how many, what their correct answers were and their final scores. It even tells me details on the questions. Like say, okay, this is the percentage rate for each question. So obviously we know question three was well answered where question two wasn't so well answered. So that can provide you some nice information. You can also, with these report options, you can actually download the report. Now, if you download the report, you can save it to your Google Drive or just download it as an Excel file. I've done that already. And so this is what it looks like in Excel. So yeah, we've got a nice little Excel file. It tells you the details of the report. There's the summary, very nicely laid out. There's nice details. Um, there's the summary as well of the students. And there you can see quiz one, each question individually, what the, the, the students typed in, what were their results. And you can see all these little options here at the bottom. And then there's the raw report data. So you can see what each student said and what their answer was and so on. So there you can see all the data that's been formulated from that report. They can give you nice feedback that you can use for assessments if you want to use it for assessments or if you want to just see how well the students are answering or which students are struggling. And that way you can do some remedial action. So that's how you run Kahoot's. I have a little board in my classroom to say who's the Kahoot champion for the week. So whenever we do a Kahoot, then the, the winner of the Kahoot gets on the board. It also adds to the motivation to try to do well in these little quizzes. So I do a couple of these quizzes at the end of each of my lessons. Um, and so that helps just to make it a little fun at the end and they, they love it. So go use your Kahoot's. If you didn't see our previous video on Kahoot's on how to create a Kahoot, click on the link over there. Otherwise, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear feedback from you of what you would like us to do. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.